Here we are in game number two. I'm Nathaniel here from the Clash Hub. I'm super excited about this. This is game number two with row two versus OK. We do have Azalea, and OK has actually switched in Katsu. Now, this is an interesting change in here. I'm curious about that switch because while Katsu is a fantastic pick overall, we all know Azalea loves Red and the Ledger to just completely shut down Katsu. So Azalea out of the gate, turn zero, breaking deep blue. Row 2's equipment is really, really interesting in this matchup. Bringing in deep blue and Ragamuff Tat. Such interesting choices in here. All right, so he's definitely thinking through what comes next. We do have a red in the ledger, and he could rag a muffin's hat uh, if he gets everything out. That infecting shot, though, is probably preventing him from being able to do that. So getting out the fatigue shot, not necessarily something you want in this matchup, but it's not a bad thing. Pull out some cards from him. And he's snap dragons already, so he's probably going to snap into bullseye bracer. There's the go again. And yep, there's the bullseye into Red and the Ledger. Oh, no. Interesting. Okay, Lace with Frailty. Oh, right there. Then he's going to put Red and the Ledger on top. And then Azalea and Red and the Ledger. And that's why you do Ragamuffin. Such a fantastic play there. And crazy good knowledge on that. Bringing in an 8 would dominate. What a interesting turn 0. Completely shutting down everything. So he gives them a frailty token. He only has one attack. Doesn't really matter. But he fatigue shot him. So it's going to half whatever he throws out anyway. So even if he were to throw out some big attack, it's not going to do anything. Harmonize Kadachi's 0. What a sh turn 0 shutdown. So, read the glide path. Such a fantastic card on here. I'm actually curious to see what he's going to do on that front. Usually you do that in the Ravenous Rabble. You, you'll drop that. Yeah, so that's what he did. He dropped it. Now he gets to see the top of the card. And come in with the Ravenous Rabble. I can't remember what he put in, in the arsenal. I believe it was an infecting shot, if I remember correctly. There's going to be Lace with Inertia into that, I think. Unless he wants... Oh, so you could actually dominate in... Um, that was a buff in there. You could dominate in the buff. But nope, nope, nope. Actually, you wouldn't have enough resources, so don't even ignore all that. Uh, but coming in for 11. He did a 4 attack into an 11. That's 15 damage right here. Already saying to Katsu, I am going to kill you if you don't block this. Which, this is not a great spot for Katsu at the moment. Oh, with a sink below. And another sink below. So that was a very, very defensive um, hand right there for Katsu. Blocking out the 11th. I'm curious. Okay, so heart and cross strap. So we're going to try to hit the combo line there. Ascendant Gust Wave. I'm looking at what we have in the graveyard. So coming in for three, respecting it. Oh no, just gonna take it. I mean, you're at 20 at this, right? Like, there's an 11th health difference. You got, you can do what you want. Oh, and he does. He just has the normal the normal Bonds of Ancestry line in with a Whirling Gust Wave. Going to take it. So now it's 9 to 13, but you have... You still have... I mean, you got a lot on here, right? So you have that Spire Sniping. That's interesting. So you get the Release Detention into Red and Ledger. Sure, it's not dominated, but he has to block it all or his turn is done. So three cards are going to come in. So his turn is done anyways, really. Like you could do uh, Kadachi Kadachi. 
but what? Oh, but he's got to knock the death whistle. Okay. Katsu just arsenal and passes. Absolutely crazy. So Azalea, Road 2, really, really not just destroying the equipment, turn zero, just absolutely doing it from the get go. Getting in an affecting shot on top, which is actually interesting. With a knock in there, Azalea added in. Uh, but we do have, we're going to have a, a lace. So I think the idea behind this would be, uh, you know, you get the you get the double blood rot pox on him to. Yep. And there's it. There it is. Coming in with dominate double blood rot pox. So he's going to prevent, you know, he's going to block six or block three of this. Take six. Or, okay. Take seven or yeah. Take five. Excuse me. So he's down to four. But if he just passes here, he's dead. So he has to pitch for the blood rot pox in order to not die. Blocking out here. Oh no, he doesn't have enough blues. He's gotta be he's gotta be able to pitch to at least one one of them. Coming in for three here. I think as as Azalea, I'm just gonna take it. Oh no. And that's game. Rotu reading it immediately saying, hey, I don't know that you really have the blues to counter out the double blood rot pox and just completely shutting him down. A lot of people don't really realize this, but Azalea does not struggle with getting Red and the Ledger out in Clash. You are consistently getting it out. She is a dominant force. If you have ninjas in your Field, Azalea is a fantastic choice in order to really slow them down. It's very scary. I love the unique builds that Bro2 has on Azalea. That right there has been phenomenal. And even just the Ragamuffin's hat. So it's a really interesting choice. You know, I usually go for the Op2, the Talisman, but that right there is so good. But thank you everybody for joining us. I'm Nathaniel. I'm here at the Clash Bash. And join us as we get into the next semi final round.